every part of your case is the most important part of your case. But if you can't report on the stuff that you found and you can't talk intelligently about it six months to a year after you worked it, then a lot of your hard work is not going to pay off when it's time to conclude in that final stage, whether it be trial or reporting or presenting of your results. FTK has a bunch of different ways in which you can display that information, report that information. In this week's episode of FTK Future Focus, we're going to take a look at the file list pane and how to customize your columns and export that file list info in a way that means the most to you in your case. Welcome to FTK Feature Focus. I'm Justin Tolman here at Xtero. And like I said, this week, we're gonna take a look at the file list pane and how you can report the information that is found there. So jumping right in it, we have a list of Microsoft Office documents. We've done a lot of work in the file list pane behind the scenes and in how you can interact with the file list pane to make your life a little bit easier. So what we have here is a bunch of Microsoft documents and you'll notice that the column here is set to Microsoft documents. That makes sense. That's what we want to see. If you were to switch say to email, notice it switches to email. If you switch to graphics, it'll switch to graphics, so on and so forth. We have automatic column switching, not a big thing, but a lifesaver. If you're moving back and forth between a lot of stuff, it's really convenient. And one thing we have to remember when we look at our column sets is the saying that I say on here so often is that product and development have to build things to do the most good to the most people. They build for more than just me and more than just you. They build for everyone who's using the platform or who may use the platform. So what we have to keep in mind is sometimes it may not be exactly how we want it, but the cool thing about FTK is it's highly customizable. So for example, we have the Microsoft documents uh, column set here. We can click on the column settings button, the little grid icon here, and it will open up our manage column settings from here. You can view the columns in each one if you didn't want to toggle through it, but you can also make your own new ones from scratch. Notice that we have all the different things in categories here, or of course you have all features, which is all columns. And you can just move stuff over, uh, you know, just by double tapping or adding them over here. You can build as many or as few columns into this as you want, give it a name and click save. The other thing you can do if you don't want to build something from scratch is to select one. We'll go back down to our Microsoft documents and allow you to copy select it. You, you cannot edit the default column sets that are in FTK, but you can copy them and then edit the copy. So if we hit copy selected, it's going to open that up and you have everything here and notice that it changes the name here so that you know it doesn't create a conflict. So you could change this to whatever you want, of course, to say um, minimal uh, Microsoft Docs, okay? Something like that. And let's say, for example, we want to remove the item number, um, the file type category. We don't need that. We already know we're in there. And let's say here we have the create a date, modify date, sure, the size, all this sort of stuff that we care about. Cool. So we have minimal uh, Microsoft Docs and we'll click OK and we will go down and find minimal Office Docs, select it and click apply and close our window. And we'll just double click on these to kind of spread them out. So now we have the information listed in the columns that we want. And what I like to do is put the most important information, in my opinion, to the left and then go to the right to the stuff that I may or may not care about. So I'd probably do actually a little more work because I don't really care about the size. Typically when talking about Microsoft documents, um, I may care about the title and all this other stuff a little bit more such as created time uh, here. I might care a little bit more about, but you get what we're doing. Um, you can actually save this as a case default or as a system default so that you never have to do it again. That's great. That's going to help you out to see the information that you care about. You can see the doc. 
Notice that the path here, we can move this around, of course, but we can, we have the path. We know right where it is, um, right where we're getting that information so that you can go look at that directory if you need, whatever the case may be. So we have all of our Microsoft documents. We're going to limit how many we have here real quick by coming down to Microsoft 2010. Now, let's say that we wanted to report just on this information here. Somebody wanted to take a look at what documents they had in the associated information with that. The easiest way, in my opinion, is to right click and go to export file list info. And we'll navigate in this case to our desktop. Now you have the ability to specify the type of file. Since this is column data, in my opinion, comma separated value works the best because it will automatically open in a spreadsheet software, which will make it really easy to view. However, that having been said, if you are going to ingest it into something else to do something with it, you can select whatever export type works the best for you. It may also depend on the type of files that you are working with. For example, if you were working with information like photo data with GPS data and you wanted to create a KML to open in Google Earth, you could export that information like that. So we're gonna choose CSV. We'll give it a name of Microsoft Docs. CSV. Now this is important, file list items to export. If we only did all highlighted, we'd only get one item. The selection contains one item. You need to remember to select what you want. Now it may be, it may be all highlighted if you highlighted them or I'll check. Just make sure you're doing the right one. So I'm gonna do all listed. It'll get these here. Go ahead and click save. And we'll come over to our bookmarks. We'll select our username. We'll right click and we're gonna create an empty bookmark and we'll call it Microsoft Doc Information. If I can spell it right, information, click OK. Now we select it and we're going to attach a supplementary file. So we'll click attach file and we'll go out to our desktop. And I also have an uh, XLSX version. You want to make sure that uh, Excel is closed. When you do this, click open and then click save. And now you have this back in your case, ready to append to the report if you want to use the report wizard It'll be there as a hyperlink, be included within your final report. One thing I want to point out here is I did bring in both the Excel version and the CSV version. If you look at the CSV version, FTK will parse it as a CSV, and that's what it is. CSV is a text file, so it shows as a CSV, and that's why I always save it out as an Excel version, just so if you were to look at it in your case, it kind of cleans that up there. Also. Um, it makes it easy for less technical end users if it's already in the Excel format. But again, you can customize these columns so that it exports out anything that you want or anything that you need. If all you needed was the name and the path of where it was or the name and the sector location of where it was, create a column set that only has that information, export out that file list information, you can deliver it really easy for clear reporting. The other thing I like about this is typically, especially if you're going to court, it's not going to be work. Typically, it's not going to be work a case, go to court that week or the next week or whatever. You're typically months down the line and remembering all the information is next to impossible. And so this creates, again, a clear way for you to review your case coming back later. Oh, what were these documents? Where were they at? Who authored them? Very quickly in an organized way, if you have the digital version and they haven't just printed it off, you can also just filter it down yourself for easy examination later without having to boot up FTK, reload your case, etc. months or years down the line. Okay, so exporting file list info, huge time save. You can do it in any tab, in any instance of the file list pane. Notice we have one down here. We could also do it in search if you wanted to create a custom search results column set, you could do that. The options are pretty much endless on what you can do. You can customize it to your needs, save that into your database so it's ready for every case. You can also set it as a case default or as an environment default if you want. Okay, I hope that this week's video was helpful in giving you a tip on how you can make the interface work a little better for you in reporting. And remember, if you're finding these helpful, you should probably look into purchasing our training. We have Forensic Toolkit Learning Passes, which will take you through everything within the FTK interface in a huge deep dive, and you'll be 
an expert in using the software. And the more you know how to use the software, the easier your cases will be, the faster you will move through them, and the more successful you'll be. So be sure to go check out training and get yourself trained because it's super important. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again next time.